Computer, take a memo to Admiral Henson, Navy Headquarters for FTL Transmission. Ma'am, this is Clay on the Dreadnought. We have spent the last week on patrol in this cluster, and up to this point we have seen no evidence of the unidentified shipping you described in your report. Furthermore, I must register Sir, my... we're getting a coded transmission on a secure channel. It's the Harvard. She's under attack. Looks like she's encountered a small indie fleet. Signal the Harvard. We're on our way. Damn! Attention! Enemy shipping! This is Captain Mishima of the Commonwealth vessel Harvard. This is your final warning. Emergency power coming on stream now, sir. Good. Status? Message coming in, sir. This is Quartermaster Macduff of the independent vessel Indecent Proposal. You will surrender your vessel to us. Your ship has been commandeered by the independent Navy. Offer no resistance and no one will be harmed. Go to hell. All hands, now hear this. To prevent this ship falling to the enemy, we are scuttling her. Prepare for emergency evacuation. All hands, evac station. That would be a very dangerous move, Captain Mishima. Are you absolutely sure you wouldn't like to reconsider? What's their position? Ten million kilometers in closing. They're right by the Lagrange point. Two ships moving in to intercept us. Okay, gunner, missile slow mode, target on bogey A, launch on my mark. Mark. Helm, ready with 180 pitch. Now! Fire! Second Indy coming about. Now. Status on the Harvard? The Harvard and the Indies have gone. I think they've taken her. Admiralty's not gonna be happy about this. Worsening conditions in Bangladesh are proving too much for government aid operatives as the oceanic rise continues. As Governor Ledbetter was making the announcement, All right. the power outage is in the downtown out. area. Commander Briscoe, wouldn't you say that the latest loss of a Navy ship to the pirates I represents sick. extreme incompetence on Dude. behalf of the Navy? Cool. <clears throat> Where is she? Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, I want to apologize for Admiral Hansen's absence. She got caught in a power outage coming down from the orbital, and of course the storm made... Does anyone else here find it surprising that a woman with more than 3,000 spaceships at her disposal should find it so difficult getting to a meeting on time. <laughs> I'll get right to it. These figures are not pleasant reading. Successful piracy attacks are going through the roof. We've lost ten shipments of neutronium headed for Earth this week alone. We've also lost four Navy vessels in the last month. One destroyed and three captured by the Indies. Frankly, our current attempts to contain the situation are failing. Thank you, Admiral Brett. Any responses? If the press get to hear of this, with all respect, to hell with the press, John. Just in A zone, we have four billion to feed. We need those shipments. If we can only trim the military budget. What? And have the Indies walk all over us some more? We're not dealing with some band of gun-happy pirates. We've been fighting a guerrilla war out there for the, the last 50 years. If we need to do anything, we need to strengthen the fleet. I am adjourning this meeting. I think we all need to look at this data a little more closely. Meeting adjourned. Oh, 
Admiral Brett? Yes, Mr. Mr. President? I'd like a word. So there we were, hovering 10 meters off his bridge, pointing a 5 terawatt cannon through the bridge viewport. <laughs> what happened next? Captain Mishima stood proudly on his bridge, in his starched navy uniform. And believe you me, he was ready to blow the ship. But when he looked up and saw that cannon, he realized he was looking death itself right in the eye. And... He had a sudden change of heart! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's go take a look at her! Aye, she's going to be a very useful ship. And she'll be ready in time for the assault. As long as our mysterious friends keep their part of the bargain and deliver the spider. Oh, she's beautiful, isn't she? And so much nicer for a spot of color. Since Admiral Hanson will not be joining us, I thought you might be interested in this report. If our sources are correct, the Indies are planning their most significant attack in years. They have selected a target which would hurt us immeasurably. Which is? The Toloman jump point at Alpha Centauri. They plan to block the most strategically vital junction point in known space. Block it? How? I'll... I'll recall the fleet. We can... No. If we send in the fleet, there won't be an attack. We'll just lose our informants. No, this needs something. Someone special. Someone we can use without raising suspicion. I'll get on to it. We can have the most decorated officers in known space. Listen, and listen well, my friend. We don't need decorated. We don't need senior, well-educated, or well-connected. This is a war. What we need are results. Now, tell me, which serving officer has had the most kills? Hmm, I'll just... Clay Jefferson H. Captain Dreadnought CNV-301. Kill total 151. Confirmed. Jefferson Clay, eh? Send him on a patrol mission to the Toloman jump point. Can we trust him? He has a reputation as a dangerous man. Good. We need a dangerous man. Okay, people, listen up. I know this mission was at short notice, so let's all be careful, okay? Let's see what treats we have in store for today. Captain, a serious situation is developing. You should get underway at once. As you are well aware, since the discovery of the capsule drive, all interstellar missions have to take place to and from Lagrange points. All of known space is connected by the interstellar linkages formed between Lagrange jump points. But the Toloman points in Alpha Centauri space are more crucial than the rest, lying at the very center of the known space network. You should proceed at best speed to the Toloman point A.
My information suggests some kind of attack on the point itself is imminent. But as to what that attack involves, your guess is as good as mine. Just in case, we have a 10-shift backup squadron on standby if you FTL for assistance. This just sounds better and better. Your mission orders are patrol the target area and report back. If you engage any hostiles, call in the backup fleet. This is Admiral Brett terminating this briefing document. Well, you heard the man. Let's scan for hostiles. Scanning now. Found one. Low thermal trace, 2,000 Ks. Probably a tug. Puffin class. Okay, let's move to engage. Sir? Did we call for backup? The jump point sensor's going crazy. I'm getting a number of major contacts. FTL for backup. Now! All ships, Dreadnought has signaled for assistance. Let's move it, people. Sir? If that's what I think it is... They're trying to block the point. FTO the backup squadron. Send an abort code. Too late. Hell. If those ships come out of jump space into a blocked point, we are gonna see those ships smeared all over the city. Attack pattern V3. No, no, climb! That's it. Hold position here. Match velocities with the destroyer. Now! Full burn for the blocker! So that is the story of how Jefferson Clay died. He gave up his life to save more than 1,500 of his fellow officers. He was the greatest hero in the history of space warfare, a role model, a legend. He made a difference by inspiring a whole generation of young officers. But of course it wasn't until five years later that Clay got the chance to figure out what was really going on. Lieutenant, you will have realized by now the value the Commonwealth places on the fleet. The latest Navy plan is to increase the size of the fleet by 10% this year. Our records suggest that there are a number of promising salvage candidates in the debris field left over from the battle for the Ptolemy Exchange. The debris field is protected by a number of mine devices. These have been alerted to your presence and temporarily deactivated. You and your crew will enter the debris field in a standard command section subvessel. It should be compatible with most vessel classes in the debris field. You should attempt a salvage operation on the most intact hulk you encounter. A flatbed tug will transport the command vessel to the vicinity of the debris field.
To secure against the prospect of indie looting, the debris field is protected by hunter-seeker mines. These will be alerted to your presence and deactivated. The tug will release the command section and wait outside the debris field. You should then pilot the vessel into the field and start the search for any salvageable vessel candidates. You should investigate any large debris items which might be ships. Our scans reveal several promising hulks within the field which seem to be intact. If you find a salvageable ship, dock the command section onto the vessel and pilot the ship back out of the field to rendezvous with the flatbed. You'll have some time to kill before the tug gets you near the debris field, so I suggest you use that time wisely in familiarizing yourself with the command section controls. We are entering the debris field now, logging many debris items. Thank <laughs> you. 
that Corvette looks promising. Docking complete. We have a green light on the cables, on the airlock, and the pass-throughs. Looks like we have ourselves a starship. Burn, what state is she in? Considering she's been five years in the freezer, not bad. The accommodation units are missing, and the main tank is holed. But the reserve is still okay. Sir, we are reading activity from the hunter-seeker mines. Sir, I'm getting a signal from within the ship. What kind of signal? It's coming across on the crew intercom video link. Here, I'll, I'll patch you in. Would you dig up my grave? I beg your pardon? I said, would you dig up my grave? Of course not. So I gather you don't approve of being disrespectful of the dead? No. Why? Because of this. Me. Being here now. Being here dead. That's why I was killed. I am dead. But would they let me rest in peace? Would they? Oh, no. They would not let me be. Some son of a bitch recovered the Hulk of the Dreadnought and pulled out this sorry digital facsimile of my mind. An unholy capture of my last thoughts taken without consent during my final glorious medal-winning battle. And then they drag me kicking and screaming back into service. I'll tell you, this is one odd Navy boy. You don't get time off, even for being dead. Listen, if it helps at all, I didn't ask for some kind of digital command assistant. Digital assist, digital assistant, that's me. Get your untrained crew out there into darkest space, and if they drift into a bit of trouble, wander off the edge of their limited simulator academy safe territory into trouble, then the crew can drop their milk and cookies, press a few buttons, and the captain of matter pops out the answer. Well, I don't think so. So you're not gonna help? Did I say that? No. Only I am gonna play it like a computer. Stupid dumbass questions in, stupid smartass sarcastic remarks out. Now if you ever manage to ask me a question which doesn't insult my experience and intelligence, I dare say I'll force a civil answer out of myself. When you join the Navy, you expect to serve on a ship. We were sent out to find a ship. What we found was the Dreadnought, first in her class and the last ship of Jefferson Clay. When the ship was refitted, my CO was impressed enough to let me try out for command. This 
is a training exam in piloting Dreadnought class corvettes. All prospective officers should pass this exam before entering active service. Your performance will be monitored and scored. The exam will test your ability to control the ship. You will be maneuvering using thrusters only. On screen is a Type 2 navigation buoy. We call them rings. Your objective is to fly the ship along a course made up from a series of such rings. To complete the course, you must fly through the center of each and every ring in turn. Colliding with the ring will result in damage to your vessel. The total time taken to complete the course will be measured, and the faster you complete it, the more you will score. You may resit this exam at any time in order to improve your score. Okay, the objective of this exam is to pass through the center of all the rings in the course in the shortest possible time. The timer starts when you pass through the first one. Any questions? How do I know which is the next ring? Your head-up display will automatically lock on to the next ring when you fly through a ring successfully. What if I miss a ring? You have to pass through all the rings to complete the course. You can mess around with the order, but I, I would try to do them in the order that they come. What if I hit one? It worked. Okay, the timer is running. halfway. One more to go. Superb. That's a new course record. This exam will establish your ability to control a Dreadnought-class corvette using autopilots, 
the ship's linear displacement drive, LDS, and capsule drive. During the flight, you will be accompanied by an instructor pilot in another corvette. You should listen to his spoken instructions and you should follow them to the letter. On completing the course, your instructor pilot will score your performance. Dreadnought, this is your instructor pilot. You are currently docked to the Salt Lake Navy facility in Earth space. I'd like you to use undock to separate from the station. Now I want you to select my ship as the nav target by using the select target function. Good. Now I am now your selected nav target, so don't shoot me. With my ship selected, you can now use autopilot. First try approach. Good. Now, now, now try the formate autopilot.
okay. I'm coming out of LDS near the jump point. See if you can drop out near to my location. Okay, we should now jump back to Earth L5 redot with Salt Lake. That will conclude the exercise. This exam will determine your ability to accomplish docking maneuvers in a Dreadnought class corvette. To complete the exam, four cargo containers have to be moved from their rest position into the cargo hopper. To do this, you should dock with each of the containers in turn, and then release the containers when you are on such a trajectory that will result in the container being caught by the hopper. This is a timed exam. We will measure the time taken from docking with the first container to the point where the last container enters the hopper. Your score will be based on how rapidly you complete the task.
This exam will determine your ability to use the standard weapon systems of a Dreadnought class Corvette. Your objective is to destroy all the static targets on the course. This is a timed test. To start the exam, you must pass through a ring. The timer will stop when the last static target is destroyed. Once again, your score will be based on how rapidly you complete the task. Timer's running now. This advanced level exam will determine your ability to use the standard weapon systems of a Dreadnought class Corvette. But this time, you will be faced with a hostile target, protected by hunter-seeker mines. These mines will actively attempt to collide with the ship. You should destroy them before they do so. You will be marked down if your ship is damaged. Your main objective is to destroy a target vessel, which is protected by these mines. This is a timed test. Your instructor pilot will offer you guidance as you take the test. All right, your objective is to take down the target ship in the fastest possible time. But watch out, it bites back. You're in range. The timer is now running. Launching mine.
time anyone's ever done this course since Jefferson Clay back in 54. This advanced level exam will test your ability to act in concert with other ships in multi-vessel combat. After launch, you will encounter a lower ranking vessel, which you should enlist as your wingman. Following that, you and your wing should jump into Mars space to engage in combat with multiple opponents. I should stress that the only way to succeed in this combat is for you to make use of your wingman, which of course requires that you issue orders to him during battle. You may wish to study the wingman command shortcuts before commencing this mission. On completing the combat, you should return to Salt Lake. This is Patcom Sword, standing by. You should proceed to Mars space now. Targets approaching. If you gave your wingman some orders, he might be able to help.
Excellent. All targets destroyed. Dreadnought, return to base. This is your first stint as acting captain, so we expect your finest efforts. I know we have you to thank for salvaging this ship, but treat her with respect. This is an easy mission, so don't expect to see any action on your first watch. The Indies have been threatening to commit acts of terrorism where it will have the greatest effect in our own backyard. So the Brass are asking for frequent security patrols of sensitive sites within the solar system. Your mission is to fly as a wing to the Corvette Tripoli on the Dawn Watch. You should follow the Tripoli's lead and stay close to her at all times. The Tripoli is being piloted by someone you know. Your old academy instructor pilot, Ben Abrahams. So, I guess they drafted him again. Stick close to Ben, and you'll do fine. This is Salt Lake Navy Base Space Traffic Control to CNV 301, Dreadnought. We have you guys docked on Pier 5, Dreadnought. You are clear for departure. This is the Tripoli calling the Dreadnought. Dreadnought, meet you at the rendezvous waypoint.
message repeats. Mayday! This is the Emmerich Press Burger. We've been attacked by unidentified ships near the Environmental Control Drone 3. We're facing a serious reactor problem. Please, furnish assistance. This is the Commonwealth Navy vessel Dreadnought. We have docked with your ship. Please evacuate all personnel. Sir, all five crew are aboard. And, and the transport looks ready to blow. We're going to check out the EC drone. Follow me. Approaching Environmental Control Drone 3. Hey, they shouldn't be there. Looks like two indie ships. Hey, they're firing. The Tripoli is down. One bogey moving to attack, second bogey making a run for it. Let's engage this guy here. If we're quick enough, we can catch the other bogey before he makes it to the other range. That's one bogey down. I was sorry to see Abraham's go. It was a bad omen. I didn't realize it at the time, but it was just a taste of the trouble to come. One of our outposts is suffering at the hands of Indy hostiles, who attack after jumping in at the nearby Lagrange Point. We need to reinforce the defense of the outpost, so we are installing one of these. It is, in effect, an artificial asteroid, and it is unmanned. The Gunstar is fitted with multiple automatic cannon. These high-power cannon fire two gigawatt particle beam bursts at rapid discharge rates. We use Gunstars to surround a Lagrange point. The firepower is great enough to take out any unwanted incoming ships. Frankly, they are a much more cost-effective way of protecting a Lagrange point than keeping a ship on permanent patrol. A team of engineers is installing a cluster of four gun stars surrounding the problem Lagrange point in the Ross 128 system. While they are offline, 
The gun stars are vulnerable to attack. Your mission is to oversee the final installation and activation of these units. You will then assist the engineers in the final installation and live tests. The engineers will need to dock and commission each gun star before they will activate. You must defend the location from any attack until all four gun stars are operational. We've had word that the Indies know we're installing new defenses, so be on your guard. This is the engineering tug Suez calling the Dreadnought. Welcome to the Ross Gateway, and say hello to my boys. The last of the gun stars arrived only a few hours ago. All the stars have been placed in position and are fully set up. The only thing required now is for me to fit the army key to them all. It should only take a few minutes. Suez out. We're moving on to the second gun star. until you can make things safer for us. Online. We're moving on to the third platform. Thank <laughs> you. 
Three all nine. One more to go. North. All gun stars have been armed and are now online. Thanks for your assistance. If you don't mind, we're getting the heck out of here. Two heads out. It was the first time I encountered the Indies in serious numbers, and I came out of it pretty well. But anyone could see that the war was hotting up. A rendezvous waypoint has been laid in for Jupiter space. Proceed to that location, where you will be picking up some cargo. I'm sorry, I can't tell you more at this point. This is Salt Lake STC to Dreadnought. You have been granted permission for launch. Dreadnought, 
proceed with docking on the upper hatch. Admiral Brett is coming aboard. At ease, everyone. Captain, stand by to receive a new briefing document. This is Admiral Brett. The Commonwealth is developing a radical new class of attack ship, and we are approaching a delicate phase in that development process. The first space trials of the new ships are about to begin, and I would like to visit the test range in person to see the outcome for myself. I would like you to take me to the Navy Weapons Testing Range in Wolf 359 space. Once there, your ship will act as official observer vessel. I feel that my cruiser, Brazen, might draw a little too much attention. When we are in position, the experimental vessels will be launched and we will observe them as they engage a number of targets. Finally, we will test the maneuvering capabilities of the new ships by engaging in simulated combat with them. The first test will start as soon as we reach the observation point. Okay, take us to the observing position. Waypoint 1. This is the observe point. Brett to range master. Commence the target run. Captain, I'd like you to now engage in mock combat with the fighters. We'll be using cannon only. Your engineer will reprogram your cannon to low intensity. We don't want anyone to get hurt. We will log hits on the dreadnought versus hits on the fighters. This is Purple One. Okay, dreadnought, I'm coming for you. Exercise complete. The fighters won. Sir, uh, picking up a new thermal trace, not a Commonwealth ship. Must be an Indy spy ship gone cold. It's powering up and moving away. This is Brett. I want that ship intercepted now. Kestrel 1 and 2, intercept. Dreadnought, you hold position here. Thank <laughs> you. 
Industrial to Brett. Sir, target destroyed. Sir, I think you should know there were no signs of weapons or crew on her. Sir, I'm picking up another new thermal trace near the launch bay this time. Looks like a Corvette. I think she's heading for the jump point. The first ship was a decoy. Let's move to intercept the Corvette. they didn't make any FTL transmissions. We'll terminate the tests and return to base. The test of the fighters hardly went to plan, but it was clear that they represented a major tactical advantage for the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth is dependent upon faster-than-light communications for almost all commercial and military activity. What you see on screen is a representation of one of Earth's faster-than-light communication relays located in the outer solar system. These devices are most vital to maintaining the FTL communications network. The central array feature, shown here, serves as both receiver and transmitter for FTL signals. These particular units pick up weak FTL messages, store them, and later retransmit them in spare transmission opportunities into the FTL stream. FTL relays need an ultra-microgravity environment to operate and so are situated in the outer solar system. Unit number 307 has been behaving in a very odd way for the last couple of months. Now the relay has failed altogether. The unit is currently in Pluto space. We suspect that the Indies are trying to tap into our deep space comms network. Whatever the cause, we need you to get the relay back online. For this mission, your ship will be equipped with a mini service drone. We're at the Pluto Terran L point. I have locked in a waypoint at the location of the relay. waypoint where the relay is, or rather should be. There's no sign of it on the scopes. I'm getting a very faint trace. I, th I think it's a ship, but it's too distant to ID. I wonder what that guy is doing out here.
Ah, there we are. We have ourselves some indie ships near our missing relay. That's odd. One looks dead in the water. I'm looking at the array. It's not working, but there are no visible signs of damage. Could be just a CPU crash. If it needs rebooting, we could do that. How? We might be able to fix it with the mini service drone. You would need to send the drone in to access the maintenance panel. It's on the end of the central spire structure, but there's no way that an autopilot will get it in there. You'll have to manually fly it in to dock. Touchdown! Accessing remote interface. Rebooting now. Well done, Captain. Looks like the comms relay is back online. Captain, I'm, I'm getting a heat buildup inside the array. Doesn't make sense. What the hell is that? The computers are going crazy. They seem to be dumping out data at an amazing rate. The optical network won't be able to deal with this. We've got total systems failure. If I am right, every CPU chip on board has crashed. Even the drinks machine is offline.
Looks like we completed this mission. This had been a strange one. I'm not some kind of repairman, so I couldn't have cared less what happened to the relay. But we had encountered something very odd out there, and it was some while before I discovered what that was. As you know, we have been blockading the midway jump point in the UV SETI system for some months now. We believe the planet to be a center of Indy activity, and the jump point forms the gateway from the associated systems to the rest of known space. By blocking this tactically significant point, we are able to isolate a group of problem systems, as well as prevent Indy shipping coming in or going out of the system. On screen is a representation of the Midway planet and moon. There are two Lagrange points allowing access to the system. In an earlier mission, we were able to lock off one of the two Lagrange points with a Type 24 minefield. This leaves the second point open. It is this point which we are currently blockading. The Siege Fleet has three cruiser command vessels as well as numerous Corvette and PATCOM squadrons on patrol. Admiral Brett is flying out to oversee operations. He needs transport to Midway and has decided to hitch a ride on the Dreadnought. Admiral Brett will be spending his tour on the Vostok, so your first objective will be to dock with the cruiser and see the Admiral safely on board. Once that is complete, your mission will be to locate and relieve Captain Chowdhury on the Cape Town, who has been on active patrol for over a week. I am sure she'll be very pleased to stand down. Once there, follow orders from the command ships in supporting the siege. STC-2 Dreadnought, you have permission to undock over. Capsule jump destination for Midway. Laid in. Bostonian, this is CNV301 Dreadnought. We are set to rendezvous with the Vostok. As for cargo, we are carrying brass. Dreadnought, your codes check out. Have a nice day. The Vostok is the cruiser over there, a little way back from the main line. She's a beauty, huh? This is the cruiser Vostok. Dreadnought, we are tracking you. You have permission to dock. Over.
Admiral Brett has left the ship. Let's go find the Cape Town. the Cape Town on scopes. Sir, something's coming to the point. This is the Bostonian. All vessels alert. Hostile intruder detected. is an MD tug Puffin class. He's uh, transmitting coordinates by FTL. Sir, the uh, coordinates, they are the location of the cruisers. I got a feeling I know what's gonna happen. Sir, we are detecting activity at the Lagrange point. Looks like three large contacts. Sir, three large metal fragments dropped out of capsule space. One collided with the Bostonian and the other with Abraham Lincoln. The third has gone wide. It missed the Vostok and it sinks towards the planet. Admiral Brett to all ships. Attack. Don't let so much as one of them escape. The ship hidden in the debris turned out to have been carrying vital supplies for the Indies on the planet. Brett was pretty impressed that we got him, but in the long run I'm not sure that it made any difference. The siege was starting to collapse. Piracy of all kinds continues to be a significant problem throughout known space. Preventing the illegal capture of cargo and ships is the single most important reason for the Navy's existence. Not only is space piracy criminal, but the proceeds go on to fund the independence in their attacks on Earth and the Navy. The problem in the Beta Hydra system is particularly serious. The system suffers repeated attacks on shipping, 
usually by pirates demanding neutronium ore. But we have made a breakthrough. In recent days, a Commonwealth spy drone has identified a cache of neutronium containers hidden by the pirates in the asteroid field. This is a Type 6 proximity mine. It is small and will automatically attach itself to any static target. We are equipping your ship with enough Type 6s to place on the cargo pods. You should locate the cache and attach mines to as many cargo pods as possible. remote guns to defend their cache. I'd advise against shooting the gun. They will probably set off an alarm. The guns are pretty weak. If we can keep our distance, they'll probably not lock on to us. Captain, I've got a distress signal from the outer edge of the asteroid belt. This is a civilian area, 
We're obliged to follow it. They've docked, sir. I can only assume they are coming aboard. Seal off the bridge. We're not going down without a fight. That should be possible. I've locked the bridge airlock from our side. Clever, Captain, clever. But you've deserted your crew. Now, I'm going to throw out one of your skilled mechanics every 20 seconds until you comply with our demands. You'll get no assistance from me. Our demands are simple, Captain. Either give us the ship or something equally valuable. I'll throw out four men to show you I'm serious, and then you can think about it. Oh, that's Ensign Harris. What a way to go. You have skirmish medals, Clay. You must have been boarded some time. Aren't you worried? 
Hey man, I'm dead already. Perhaps they might throw my CPU out the airlock. Thanks a bunch. Might be just another bit of metal. Maybe I'd float up near that treasure hoard. Maybe the mine would blow me up. Maybe they'd blow anyone up. He's right, sir. If we could lure the fleet back to the Horde, the mines might take at least some of them out. Morgan has passed into the internal comms. He seems to be trying to reach you. Ready to give in, Captain? We need more time. You don't have it! I'm going to run out of hostages soon. What do you say? Okay, Morgan, I'm ready to deal. You have my attention now, Captain. You can't be as stupid as I thought. What do you offer? We inspected a concealed cache of neutronium shipments on the way here. They wouldn't be yours, would they? No. I have a rival in the area. Very well. Lead me there and I might well let you go.
The brass seemed unsurprised by the mission outcome, although I did receive a commendation. I was left wondering. Was I really sent out to mine the area, or was I just the bait in an elaborate trap? This is Admiral Brett on the Vostok. I'm giving you new orders. The battle for this system seems to be going against us, and I am certain that the siege will collapse. I fear that the Navy will have to withdraw from this system. This is a serious matter for those of us in the fleet, but there is another problem. The Navy has been operating a covert observation platform in midway space with a sizable staff on board. The platform has been used for gathering intelligence on the planet for some time. The personnel on the station need to be evacuated before we leave the system. I have therefore ordered troop carrier ships to move in and take the personnel on board. Clearly the ships doing the evacuation are at some considerable risk from attack.
Zach Juan. We have reached capacity, so I'm getting out of here. There are still 220 crew members on the station. This is Evac 2 moving into dock. Evac 3 has uh, bought the farm.
Health Base to Dreadnought. We expect full evacuation soon, and therefore are setting charges to destroy the base. Thought you might like to know, when the time comes, you should get clear of the base. Dreadnought, this is Evac 2. We have a problem. The vessel is over full. There are still remaining crew members on board. We can't take more without risking all our lives. I'm sorry. This is the station. There are still 20 crew members on board. We request immediate evacuation. The station is locked to self-destruct mode. Station crew on board. Let's get out of here. Retreat is never an easy thing to stomach, but we were able to evacuate everyone from the watching post. The president took the loss of the midway system hard. Ever since humanity has adopted injection fusion as our main source of energy, we have been dependent on supplies of neutronium for containing the fusion reaction. All of Earth's supply of the ultra-dense substance is mined off-world, much of it in the colonies. The substance is enormously valuable, both in dollar terms and in strategic importance. Shipments from the Barnard Star System have been disappearing. Ore is mined in the Barnard's asteroid belt by small ships. Collections of bulk ore containers are assembled into trains pulled by a container transport vessel. The transport then tows the container train to an ore processor station, which refines the ore and dumps the ore residue. 
the empty container trains are towed back to the mining site. The empty transport returns for another run, while a smaller transport collects the refined ore for shipment to Earth. The problem for the Commonwealth is that the containers are turning up at their destination empty. The parties involved propose all manner of explanations, including the ore mysteriously vanishing in capsule space, indie space pirates with invisible ships, and plain and simple graft at the collection site. Your mission is to investigate the cargo disappearances from the Barnard system. You will be a part of the team under the command of an agent from the Department of Resources. We're giving him full use of the Corvette Cato. This is Agent Holcomb of the DOR. I'm in charge of this mission, and we'll play it my way. I'm sending out four pairs of Corvettes to scout the local transport routes. You're with me, Dreadnought. We'll investigate the ore processor in the Barnard system. This is Holcomb. All right, Dreadnought. Let's move.
Mankato. We'll dock with the base. I found that interrogations go so much more effectively when conducted in person. Stay close and keep your eyes peeled. on the scope now, sir. I guess we can just sit back and watch. set for the mining base, Captain.
there's a damaged ship. It's one of ours. Dreadnought, this is Second Engineer Carlon, acting captain. They laid a trap for us. They brought all the others. The others? Yeah, six of our ships. After that, the Indies split into two groups. One is taking the captured Navy vessels, the other is shifting their neutronium supplies. We managed to put tracking beacons on both groups. We can transmit you the waypoint. Sicily looks in bad shape. I think she's gonna blow. Stand by, Dreadnought. We're going to dock with the Sicily. My team is better trained to assist a speedy evacuation than yours. Picking up the tracking beacons. I've spotted our ship, sir. They're showing up as neutral. They seem to have something attached to their upper decks. That would make sense. It's an old trick. The Indies are using temporary bridges to reroute the navigation computers. The crew are locked out. Let's say we live brave.
another of our ships is up and running. Another of our ships is up and running. Another of our ships is up and running. and run it. Another of our ships is up and running. We are approaching the Indy ships carrying the ore. Looks like the Newtonium is still in the cargo pods. Our best bet to retrieve it is to destroy the tug ships that the containers are docked to.
After we recovered the neutronium shipments, the disappearances stopped, so I guess the message got through. And as for our ships we rescued, they were so grateful I didn't have to buy a drink for weeks. This is a matter of maximum urgency. 
We have just detected several asteroids moving on a collision course with a Navy facility. The Earth's moon is used by the Navy for a number of science and research projects. The asteroids were detected on a course heading for the moon only minutes ago. We have looked at the trajectory of the asteroids and projected their course. Without intervention, we are looking at a cataclysmic impact. This would cost us the research facility and, of course, many lives. Under these circumstances, your ship appears to be best suited to this mission. Pressure of time is against you. You should locate the asteroids and destroy them as rapidly as possible. A warning. We suspect foul play here, so keep scanning for hostiles. I'm tracking more than one asteroid here. This isn't going to be that easy. The asteroid is splitting. That's bad news. We'll have to destroy the individual fragments. suspicious that a bunch of rocks should all head for the same facility at the same time, don't you think? And your ship's detected. I guess they want to check out their own handiwork. I guess the people on the Navy facility were relieved we were there. As for me, I had the strangest feeling that we had been through this experience before. This is a top secret mission. I'm afraid there's not much I can disclose at this point. Proceed to Waypoint 1 via Jupiter L4 and pick up a special cargo.
Gentlemen, Captain, today we will witness the first active service test of the new fighter vessel. I have here a new set of orders for you, which you will no doubt want to read en route. Your vessel will provide the capsule jump capability for this mission. Would you please undock and place the ship on station near the Brazen's main bay? Admiral Brett, I have decided that the time has come to test the one-man fighter craft in a real combat mission. We are about to embark on the first active service test of the Commonwealth fighter, Sea Fighter, vessel. The single-seater fighters are designed to fulfill an advance attack role. To this end, the ships carry a high-velocity projectile cannon. Their small size gives them tremendous maneuvering freedom, with astonishing rates of acceleration and turn. However, the fighters are too small to have displacement shields, so they rely on their speed and maneuverability to protect themselves. The fighters are also too small to have a capsule drive, so they need interstellar transport to the target area. The fighters will then be launched and will dock with your ship. You should then carry the ships to the target zone in the Epsilon Indy system. Once at the target system, you should hold position and allow the fighters to engage their target. A heavily fortified Indy base bearing four cannon clusters. This is a base which has, up till now, resisted conventional attack. After the mission has been completed, you should then redock with the fighters and bring them home. This is their first active service mission, so we're counting on you to see that it goes smoothly. I've entered our destination into the nav system. We're ready for jump. Not two fighters were coming up to the drop off point. Report status. Purple One, this is Purple One. All the lights are green for go. Sir, Purple Two is not responding. I'll, I'll send somebody through the hatch to check. Sir, this is Crew Chief Lennon. I'm in the fighter now. Our flyboy seems to have lost consciousness, probably when we jumped. I'll bring him in. He's not going to be flying today. So, you have yourself a fighter and no fighter pilot. Moments like this, you gotta be thankful we have remote control.
She is down.
Piloting the fighters, even over the remote link, was a pretty intense experience. And just for a moment, I toyed with the idea of giving up the command of the Dreadnought to become a fighter pilot. This is one of those days I'd rather have stayed in bed. The office of the president has contacted me to ask for a security escort on an unscheduled tour, which I take can only mean that the president wants to go on a cruise around the solar system. On these presidential flights, security is of paramount importance. Support vessels form a shield around the president's ship. Your vessel will form part of that shield. The agenda for the tour will apparently take in the Commonwealth Military Headquarters at the Jovian Lagrange Point. And then after that, his ship will visit the Mars Terraforming Project. He wants to take a look at the environmental adjustment drone from his ship. With all the secrecy surrounding this flight, I would be surprised if we have any trouble, but the President is a very big target, so keep your eyes peeled. Approaching escort fleet now. We are now in the range of the President's flagship, Excalibur. This is the Presidential Vessel Excalibur. All ships, this should be a simple operation, a run around the block, but it needs to go smoothly. We are touring the Naval Military Headquarters and following on with a visit to Mars Space. We don't expect any trouble, but if there are any problems or vessels showing a hostile intent, I want an immediate response. If needs be, Designated vessels should shield the President's ship by placing themselves in the line of fire. We need a concerted and massive response to any hostile vessel. This is Goodenough aboard the attrition. The President is taking a shuttle to the base. All ships should hold position. This is Captain Walther aboard the Excalibur. President King will now take the command shuttle to the station for a brief inspection.
all ships. The President has seen enough. We will now move to our Mars destination. All ships, we are moving out. Look at the shields on that tug. There's no way they can sustain that power output.
president made it back to the jump point alive. After that, he became very interested in security, and saving his life was certainly good for my career. We have been concerned for some time over the level of fire accuracy for Commonwealth vessels. We have therefore decided that all combat crews are required to take a refresher course in basic PBC use. Report to the range station near the Jupiter L4 point, where you will be given your instructions for the exercise. Okay, undock from the rain station and proceed to the Ganymede waypoint marked Exercise Start. You should fly on to the second waypoint marked Exercise End. Making your life harder are a number of hunter-seeker mines. You'll be marked down for any fix on your home. You must destroy all mines and pass through the ring to complete the exercise. Back to school. What a waste of time. If they were out here fighting instead of sitting behind a desk, they might have an idea what we're up against. Exercise started. stating the obvious here, but that's no fuel transporter. That is a fighter carrier.
would be fair to say you passed. So now the Indies had fighters too. The puzzle was, where were they coming from? Up till now, they've never built so much as one service pod. They just modified commercial vessels and stole military ships. The odds were getting even. Captain, a new system is being opened up. At the end of the wolf lobe, Zai Booties. The system has only just been opened up and has not yet been thoroughly surveyed. The Navy is assisting the Science Division in performing the geological survey. Your ship's role in this mission will be to support the geological survey team. The Dreadnought Starboard Accommodation Module will be replaced by the survey's set-down shuttle. In addition, the magazines on your ship will be fitted with sensor and remote probe equipment. You'll be pleased to know you get to keep your cannons. For the duration of the mission, I will be placing your ship under the command of Captain Helen Fenton of the Geological Survey. She'll probably stay off the bridge most of the time, but nonetheless, it is her orders you will be following. I'm Captain Fenton, and because this is a scientific mission, I'll be in charge. I hereby announce my authority over this vessel. The crew should note that command access authority has been changed. I suspect that you and your crew are not entirely happy about this, and so I'll not be spending my time on the bridge. I have more than enough to do in the set-down unit. Please just follow our requests, and we'll be out of your hair in no time. Now, please get us underway. We're heading for the Z-Booty system. It's a long run, but we have a great number of experiments to prepare. We need to pick up some supplies from the outpost in the adjacent system. They are taking away my command for a scientific mission. Can they do that? I'm setting course for the outpost at FK-2978. We're picking up some more equipment from the outpost there. Okay. Sir, I think I should point out that our ship has been significantly modified for this mission. The port and starboard magazines now accommodate the scientific probes and other instrumentation, and uh, we have a worryingly minimal missile complement. I'm sorry? Uh, this is the Navy vessel Dreadnought acting in support of the Geological Survey. We're here to pick up some equipment. Oh, I apologize. I assumed you were someone else. I will make preparations for your equipment. Were you expecting some pilots? Two fighters, but we have no one here who can fly them. 
I am sorry. I'm afraid I can't help you. Why did you want to step up security? We are currently detaining one Ian Menzies, an individual who might be responsible for some independence-related attacks in the area. Ah, oh, I see. Thank you. This is Fenton. We have the equipment on board. We should proceed to the Z booty system. Captain Fenton to the crew. Okay, everyone, this is it. Sci teams, get the sensors online. I'm still looking at empty screens here. Bridge team, I want a good look at that planet. Take us in close to the poles. I want a good look at the magnetic field of my planets. You'll find I've already logged suitable waypoints within your computer. your captain speaking. The last survey picked up some radical monopoles near a planetoid. I want to take a closer look. Bridge crew, get us this location. It's a planetoid about 10 k's long. I've entered the location of the planetoid into the nav system. Bridge crew, bring us to station keeping with a rock. This is Fenton. We're going to take the set down shuttle onto the planetoid. I want us ready for separation as soon as possible. This is Fenton. Okay, we're ready with a set down unit. Will you authorize the separation, please? Will do. Fenton to Dreadnought. We're expecting the EVA to last about two hours, but we'll need the Dreadnought to stand by for that time. Fenton out. Sir, picking up two thermal traces. Ships coming in on LDS.
What in hell's name is happening? There's a large ship approaching just about... We've lost contact with them, sir. This is the independent vessel to hell with the consequences, Five. At the outpost station, FK-2978, they're holding a friend of ours, Captain Ian Menzies. Simply go there, return him to us, and we will release your science crew. If you do not, then it would be bad. You have exactly 15 minutes to comply with this request and return him to us. Your ship is in no state to fight. Do not attempt to engage us. Do not attempt to contact the Commonwealth military forces. There are none in the area. Do not use FTL communications to summon help. We will know. You have one minute to consider these terms. Then I require a response. There were a number of times I've been seriously outgunned, and yet I came out of it victorious. But in this case, I would really be concerned about the outcome. You are seriously outgunned. The hostages are only a bargaining chip here. I don't think they're in any great risk. To tell you the truth, I think that you are more likely to kill Fenton than those Indies. The Indie ships are really slow and old, but, but they do have missiles and cannon, which is more than we've got. I really think we should withdraw. Dreadnought, your time is up. Do you accept our terms, yes or no? Very well. We accept your terms. We will return with your colleague.
see you, Dreadnought. If you'd be so kind as to dock with us, we'll exchange the hostages. Fenton seemed pretty unfazed by her ordeal. Within a year, she and her team had opened up the Zai Buddhist system to colonists. You will recall the incident where you intercepted Indy saboteurs, tampering with the environmental adjustment drone in Earth's orbit. There is a possibility that the Indies are trying the same thing again. What you see on screen is an environmental adjustment drone, a two kilometer long automated manufacture robot, the key device in the terraforming of barren worlds into places human beings can live. These automated factories can churn out mechanical drones and biological seeding materials. Here we see the one working on Mars. The biobomber, as we call it, can transform a desert world into a living planet in a matter of generations. Or for that matter, help to keep alive a planet bent on self-destruction. Similar drones are at the moment acting on Venus, Sigma Draconis III, and Earth. The terraforming mission on Mars has just reported in to say that they have lost contact with their terraforming drone. This might be a routine software error, or it might be something more sinister. Your mission is to investigate the drone and see if you can find out what has happened to it. We're at Mars L4. We have a waypoint laid in at the coordinates of the biobomber called EAD location. Sir, there's, there's something not quite right with the drone. It isn't responding to our ping. Either it's damaged or it's been tampered with. Sir, 
Sir, something's coming out of the drone. It doesn't look like biological feeding material. Hey, these are fighters! They've reprogrammed the drone to manufacture fighting ships. That's a very clever idea. Another wave of fighters. The CPU on the file bar is down. It should stop manufacturing new fighters. Of course, there could be some still in the pipeline.
Biobombers could magically turn barren planets into habitable worlds. Pity they couldn't work the same magic on the budget. It was months before finances authorized the repair on their computer systems. Captain, this is the outpost colony in Venturi space. A large engineering project is just coming to fruition there. The automated fuel processing station has just gone online. These stations process the volatile components of Starship fuel before transport of the refined fuel. Processing fuel in situ reduces the cost of transport. We suspect that this plant might become a new target for the independence movement and so we intend to permanently attach a cruiser to protect the station from attack. We are pulling out the regular security patrols, and the cruiser San Francisco will be placed on permanent attachment there. Your mission is to go to the Venturi colony and pick up the final engineering crew. Wait at the station for the San Francisco to patrol the area. When the area is secure, undock and return to Earth with the engineering crew.
This is Captain Hernandez on the San Francisco. We're having a few reactor problems here. Proceed with the mission. We'll meet up with you at the rendezvous at Venturi. We should be around 10 minutes behind schedule. Captain, this is Barnier. My team are now safely aboard your ship. Sir, a massive amount of jump pointed to me. All kinds of ships. to be the Harvard, until we lost it in a battle. <laughs> it's now called the Under New Ownership. Captain, this processing station is packed with a highly volatile fuel. If there's going to be a firefight, I would suggest that we put some distance between us and it. Look at this. The Indies must be really short of fuel. Some are breaking off to go and refuel the processor. You know, this reminds me of a story when I was in parachute school. This junior officer had taken a few hours extra leave, so as a punishment, he was ordered to run around the length of the perimeter fence carrying a live missile. Now, the poor guy went and tripped and fell. <laughs> but the funny thing was, he was passing the weapon storage shed at the time. <laughs> we never did find him.
If I say so myself, destroying the fuel processor was a brilliant maneuver. The Indies lost a dozen ships, and more importantly, we'd finally inflicted some damage on their destroyer, the UNO. Captain, we have just received these pictures from a spy drone in the Metal Lake system. The markings show the ship to be the Under New Ownership, the Indies' only destroyer which was captured from the Navy six years ago. We last saw this ship in the Battle of the Venturi Colony, and we now believe it was more seriously damaged than we first thought. 
timings would suggest that it made its way to the Metal Lake system using LDS drive only, and is probably waiting for fuel or repairs. I need not remind you that the very fact of this ship being in Indy hands is an extreme embarrassment to the Commonwealth. An opportunity to retake the ship now presents itself. You shall accompany the destroyer Yale on a mission to recover this vessel. Greetings, Dreadnought. This is Admiral Peterson of the Yale. Proceed at once to Waypoint One. Oh, and keep it tight. I don't want any of your usual heroics. So far, Dreadnought? Good. I'll have my people transmit a waypoint for the UNO. Now we've taken this detour, we won't be arriving from the direction of the L point. That should give us an element of surprise. Target ship is in range. I'm reading an active scan. He probably knows we're here. This is Captain Macduff of the independent vessel under new ownership hailing the unidentified Commonwealth ships. I warn you that this is a fully armed independent destroyer and unsurprisingly is more than capable of annihilating both your vessels. This is the CNV-301 Dreadnought. Captain Macduff, I'm glad to see you survived our last encounter. However, I would advise you to stand down in the face of superior firepower. Dreadnought, where I come from, that's called fighting talk.
This is Admiral Peterson of the Commonwealth Navy vessel, Yale CNV-222. I hereby detain your ship and arrest the crew of the vessel, formerly the Harvard. Any attempt to avoid detainment will be met with deadly force. Dreadnought, hold position. I'm going to try a little intimidation maneuver. His ship's in no state to fight either of us, let alone both. Quite as damaged as Admiral Peterson thought. The Yale is seriously damaged. Looks like she'll uh, be out of commission for quite some time. The under new ownership is uh, moving off. Sir, we have just received a high priority message from Admiral Brett. For your eyes only, I'm uh, putting it through. Our latest intelligence suggests that there may be a major new base somewhere in that metal lake system, perhaps the main headquarters for their fleet. If this is true, then it must certainly be the intention of the captain of the under new ownership to get his ship back to the base. I am sure that you will agree with me that he will not simply go strolling in through the front door if you are watching. The location of that base is of primary strategic importance, and identifying it should now be the main objective of your mission. To locate it using whatever means necessary. Listen, there isn't any way this guy's gonna knowingly betray the location of their base to you. The only way he's gonna go back to HQ is if he thinks you're looking the other way. Sam, if the UNO sensors are out, we might be able to slap a recon probe on her without her noticing. That way we can track her and keep our distance. If it's a base she's heading for, she'll lead us right there. ship and is transmitting. Good, we should be able to withdraw and still keep a fix on him. normal detector range now, sir. It's only the probe that's keeping the UNO on our scopes. With any 
any luck, our crew will think they've lost us. The UNO is slowing down. She could be approaching the base. The UNO turned out to be quite a find. The tech boys tracked the ship back to what appeared to be the main independence base, hidden within a giant asteroid. It was a turning point in our fortunes. All of a sudden, victory was in our sights. A dramatic new opportunity has arisen. Finally, we've discovered the location of what we believe to be the main indie base of operations, hidden within an asteroid in the Meadow Lake mining colony. We have a chance to decisively hit the independence with a strike on their most important facility. We are amassing the fleet in Epsilon Indy space, and for this mission, we are adopting a new method of attack. Small fighter spacecraft have always offered a strategic advantage in some battles. The problem, up till now, has been transporting a sufficient number of such ships into the target zone. Let me introduce you to a new addition to the Commonwealth Arsenal, the Alabama, the first fully operational fighter carrier in the Commonwealth fleet. At over 1.4 kilometers long, the Alabama is capable of carrying over 40 combat-ready sea fighters into the field of battle by FTL jumping into the target zone. However, the sheer size of this ship makes her a major target. I am therefore assigning a squadron of corvettes specifically to defend the Alabama from attack. The rest of the fleet will be made up from the cruiser Thunder as well as two squadrons of PATCOMs. We will then strike at the Indy Asteroid Base with the fighters from the carrier and the PATCOM squadrons leading the attack. The carrier itself will not directly participate in the assault and will hold position with its escort ships until the attack is over. In this mission, your role is to lead the Carrier Defense Squadron. You should stick to the Carrier under all circumstances, and take whatever measures necessary to protect the ship and its crew from harm. We need this ship back in one piece. Sir, locking in a waypoint.
proceed with us to the L4 point in the Menlite Life System. This is Eagle One. We have performed a close pass over the main base. We are seeing no, repeat no, hostile vessels. Over. This is Eagle One. We are within the base structure now. This is not, repeat not, a major base. But I guess it's been used for a refueling stop. We are seeing zero activity. Picking up a trace. Could be a computer or small device. We have a problem. lost contact with at least half the fleet. There must have been some kind of booby trap, probably an antimatter device. How many fighters are still on the scope? Zero. They're all gone. Alabama, this is the Dreadnought. We are detecting no fighters. There's nothing left for you to carry. Suggest we depart with some haste. Over. Roger that. We are, we are getting, getting the hell out of here. Multiple bogeys they seem to be interested in the command ships.
button. We've taken a deep hit to the jump drive. The jump field bubbles are not able to be repaired. We still fly okay, but there's absolutely no chance of us jumping out of this system. We're in big trouble. Suggestions, please, Captain. Man, don't disturb me. Now I am reading this great book about hitchhiking. Now where was I? This is Alabama to Dread Rock. I want to thank you, Captain, for the fifth and fifth ship. I understand your event boat is funny. We have incoming hostiles, sir. Multiple bogeys coming from the jump point. <laughs> I know the crew members on the ship owe their lives to you. I only wish we could help in some way. There are multiple bogeys coming from the jump point. Almost all space colonies have to be built from materials lifted from planets and moons. The usual way of doing this is to use a mass driver to accelerate container pods to above escape velocity and out into space. The pods are caught in orbit by a decelerator hopper, or bucket, which uses powerful magnetic fields to buffer the pod from impact. From there, the mined materials can be processed. The mining station on the moon Lupus has recently installed such a system and has asked for a ship to assist in lineup tests. You should visit the system and assist the engineering crew. The station and the hopper are dead ahead. I am tracking a number of pods coming in. Yeah, we should make sure we're out of their way. We don't want those pods to collide with us. batch of pods seem to be right on target. I'm getting a distress signal. Mead, this is the Dreadnought. We're on our way.
There she is. She's venting plasma. But I think we can still auto-dock safely. What are our options? Well, you can't dock with it because the pod doesn't have a docking point. You can't shoot it because it'll blow up. You can't nudge it off course because it will blow up. And you can't shift the platform because it is too big. What you need is a big, soft catches mitt. I think we can provide that. If the pod goes in the hopper, it should be cushioned. Okay, release the hopper. I'm coming for it. We don't have much time. Doctor the hopper. The hopper is self-powered and should match our helm. To get the pod into the hopper, we need to line it up exactly. I suggest we use the external key to get the precise lineup. Antimatter is dangerous stuff. The antimatter in that pod was just a few grams, not even an ounce. Just think what it could do in the wrong hands. We have a policy of continually testing and developing new weapon systems. As part of this process, we are evaluating a new weapon system for corvettes from the Ordnance Division. This heavy cannon fires a massive particle beam discharge. The cannon body is large and occupies the entire space of one of the corvette's upper accommodation modules. Early trials suggest the cannon to be very powerful, but not entirely reliable. Your mission is to test this mega cannon on a firing range. You should fire the weapon at all the designated targets.
Sorry, the heavy cannon is up and running. We haven't patched it into the controls yet. You'll have to fire it on manual. We have a target waypoint on the scope. Hey, did you see that? That shot went clean through the rock and kept on going. in the jump destination. structure is breaking down, sir. I estimate complete failure within five firings.
Well, we single-handedly saved the Commonwealth, but we were denied permission to keep the Mega Cannon. It was deemed too unstable. There is no justice in life. Captain, I have been asked once again to try and improve the flow of Earthbound Neutronium shipments. And once again, reports of mysterious lights have disturbed the truckers, and they are now avoiding an area of space around this moon in the Gulato system. To avoid the alleged encounters, the truckers are diverting to the Lemuel point, which is adding days onto the shipping time. I am therefore obliged to ask you to investigate this area and report back in two days' time. A thorough patrol path with over 50 waypoints has been set up for you to cover. This could be a long one. Beacon, no EM, no nothing. Could be a ship in trouble. Then again, it could be just a big hot rock. Whoa! <laughs> 
I'm seeing a very faint signal. We should get as close as possible. Mega, Mega, this is Flight Mechanic Lejeune calling to anyone who can hear me. Ms. Lejeune, this is the Commonwealth Navy vessel Dreadnought. We can barely receive your signal, and we're practically on top of you. What are you transmitting on? I think we've come across this problem before. You'll need to get your engineer to reboot your main CPU. We have no engineer. Well, not a conscious one. She knocked herself out on a bulkhead when the lights went out. I'll see if I can get access to the main CPU panel. Aha! Systems restored! Conspiracy to Dreadnought. Thanks for the help, you guys. Vessel appears to be less than four meters in beam, no discernible structure, extremely high thermal profile. Captain, that is one weird ship. Captain, uh, unidentified vessel moving off. Suggest we pursue. Like uh, the little fellow found mummy. Scanning ship. Matches no known configuration. Propulsion, mass, ornaments. Your guess is good as mine. Never seen anything like this before. I play this very cool. You're making history. We are being scanned, same as we saw outside the comms relay. They're pulling data out of our computers, but this time only a fraction of the data is being downloaded. Dreadnought, we are the Inama. Our vessel is Turkey Bad. We are collectors. Uh, Torquebad, we are honored to meet you. Let me offer a hand in friendship to your people. We are not people. We have already collected a hand. We wish to collect and we wish to trade. What is it that you collect? We collect. We thirst for the stuff which makes up the world. Enlightenment and noise. Truth. Information. You collect information, is that it? We 
collect. You are responsible for pulling information from this and other ships, aren't you? We collect only what belongs to all. You said something about a trade. What did you have in mind? We require a favor. And what will you give us in return? We shall offer you insight. What exactly do we have to do for you? We are being damaged in another place. Chaos is against us. You could assist. You want us to go somewhere and help one of your ships, is that it? We require you to assist. We have made this place accessible to you. The gate will take you there. We will remain. You will prevail. You will return. Are you saying this Lagrange point will take us to where you want us to go? I'm going to have to think this over. They've just activated our autopilot. Where the hell did they learn that trick? Check out the star chart. We're not on it. Okay, I figured the green one is our man in distress. The Christmas tree thing uh, seems to be zapping with some sort of uh, beam weapon. Time to pull its plug. having no effect on the aggressor ship. In fact, I'm not sure if there's anything there to shoot at. It looks like the beam weapon is restraining the other ship, like a dog on a leash. And what? We cut the leash? Our man seems to be free. Sir, the aggressor ship has altered. It might be one shooting at it now. You do, of course, realize you've just killed the first encountered member of an entire culture. Had it coming. We don't even know what their war was about.
Damn it. Let's get our autopilot again. Can't we take care of ourselves? If you think there's a standard capsule space route back from here, girl, you're gravely mistaken. center big enough for a ship. Just a guess. Try shooting at it. In contacting an alien race, we had made history, but our encounter with the aliens raised more questions than it answered. Dealing with them was... strange. It remained to be seen whether they would keep their word and give us something in return for helping them. You may recall visiting this FTL comms relay number 307, out near the orbit of Pluto. We were having some problems with it. At 1800 hours this evening, it went offline again. At the time, we disregarded the event, assuming it to be yet another maintenance failure. Some five hours later, when the light from the relay reached a ship in Jupiter space, we realized something more dramatic had happened. This sequence was captured accidentally by the Corvette Niagara. We see here a massive release of UV and X-ray energy. The event put out enough radiation to suggest a mass-to-energy conversion of about 54 kilograms of matter. Clearly, we have a problem with the station, and one which may be a threat to Earth security. This might be a natural phenomenon, or something more threatening. Either way, we need to find out more, without risking too many ships. So here is the bad news. We are sending you in alone, as a forward scout ship, to figure out what the hell is happening out there. One more thing. Be careful. The STC is under attack. Mayday, this is Clark. 
in the position of the relay as a waypoint. the last known position of the relay, but it isn't there. We are receiving a message on FTL comm. It reads, 2CNV301 from Commonwealth Headquarters. Stop. Relay back online. Stop. How you do that? Question mark. This is getting odder and odder. For some reason, the Commonwealth Headquarters seem to think we have restored function to the relay. Well, they seem to be right. I'm getting a strong local FTL signal which seems to be carrying the Commonwealth incoming traffic. We should be able to home into the relay by looking at the signal strength. I'll put it on the screen. Hey, this is a 3D game of warmer, colder.
I think we have found the relay. Right composition, almost the right mass. Give it take a few hundred kilos. Oh, uh, the configuration seems to have changed. I'd say our extraterrestrial friends have made this Stargate out of our comms relay. And so as to be not unfriendly, this Stargate also is functioning as an FTL relay. I was wondering when E.T. was going to show up again. They owe us a favor, and I think they want to see us to pay us our due. Let's see where this thing can take us. It's the aliens again. This is an invitation. They knew we'd be here. If it's anything like their last Stargate, we just have to dial up a destination by shooting the lights. Okay, so we want to dial up the alien homeworld? Sure thing. But as what the zip code is, you're on your own. It's one of the small aliens. Shall we consider it hostile? It's not scanning us. No signs of weapons. Listen, I think it's clear that Tinkerbell here wants us to follow it. Professor Lucero, we have contract trade. Yes, we did as you asked, and you promised us. We offered this an alteration, an amendment to your vessel. Wait a minute, what kind of alteration? We really need to see the blueprints before you change this ship in any way. We have decided you will receive your payment. The terms are 
not negotiable. I really need to know exactly how you plan to amend my ship. Like this. Where'd it go? Better still, where did we go? The stars have shifted. I'll try and get a fix. I saw you guys leaving the ship and returning. What did you see in the two hours you were away? Those ET guys throw you a party or something? Two hours? He's right. The chronometer shall we lost two hours. How? Okay. I've got our location. We're in the Midway system, practically on our own doorstep. I'm trying to establish what they did to the ship. There's some new structure in the G-Taurus. Looks like our sensors have been tampered with too. Oh, there's a modification on the command workstation. <laughs> I think you should take a look. Shall I make course for Earth? Very well. Two Indian ships ahead. Looks like we ran into the tail end of a convoy. They're heading for the jump point. we saw a moment ago. Sir, I measured a power usage by the alien device when we jumped. My guess is it's a hyperspace tracker. Instead of Earth, we followed the Indies to their destination. We'll worry about it later. Right now, we've got trouble to deal with.
So the aliens came through. They'd kept their word and handed us a device that could track ships through capsule space. We knew the device would be useful, but we didn't realize just how vital it would prove. I still wonder if in giving it the aliens had their own agenda or were simply paying back a favor. On the 15th of this month, a fragment of metal struck and penetrated a Commonwealth outpost station in the northern limb. Impacts of space junk are fairly commonplace. We examined the STC logs, and we think it came from a passing Puffin-class tug. The incident appeared to be routine, but when we came to dig the fragment out of the wall, we found this. This fragment of thermal shielding has been laser cut with a text message in English. You may be surprised to find that it is a letter from a senior Indy officer. And you may be even more surprised to learn that the letter is addressed to you. Or rather, to the captain of the Dreadnought. I'll read it for you. To Captain Dreadnought, CNV 301. Captain. I write to you as a worthy adversary and a fellow warrior. And despite the fact we are on opposite sides of this current conflict, you are the closest thing within the Commonwealth Navy I have as someone I can trust. He goes on. Something terrible is occurring within the independence movement. Steps are being taken within splinter groups to raise the stakes in the war to intensify the conflict in a way I do not and cannot approve of. I tell you now, Captain, I have taken many risks in battle, but none so grave as I do now. I wish to meet with you to offer information which you may find of benefit. I do so that I can prevent this madness. I will never betray my people or act against them, but I swear I will not see them enter into this folly. Colin Macduff, April 24th. Macduff proposes a meeting between himself and you. Clearly he cannot simply dock with the nearest Commonwealth base without undermining his position. So he proposes a small subterfuge. You are to accidentally encounter his ship on patrol and after engaging in combat, we'll destroy it. However, just prior to his ship being destroyed, Macduff will jettison the cab command unit from his vessel. As long as we keep any other Indies at a safe distance, they will think Macduff dead and withdraw, allowing you to make the rendezvous. You should meet him and hear what he has to say, but stay on your guard. How will you recognize uh, Macduff's ship? I get a feeling it won't be a problem. Biloxi to Dreadnought, we're getting a thermal trace from a number of sources. We see it, let's move to intercept. Sir, identified contact. Three puffin class tugs. Probably Indy. They're taking evasive action. Probably uh, not too keen on a fight. Can we identify Macduff's ship? I think I can guess. They're using uh, name markers now, definitely Indy. The trio are the regrettable use of force, the Edward Teach, and the Braveheart. Just a hunch, but I'd say our man is in ship number three. 
Let's see if we can split them up. Thank you, Captain, for coming to meet me. I needed to communicate with you in a more direct manner. I hope our little subterfuge was effective. Let me worry about that. Would you like to come on board? I would dearly like to, but I'm afraid time is very short for us both. Some of my colleagues in the independence movement have created a sort of alliance with a group calling themselves COSA, who can offer us military assistance. I fear that this alliance is a serious mistake and poses a threat to us and to the Commonwealth. Why are you telling me this? It's obvious. I needed someone I could trust. The Commonwealth is riddled with politicians and petty bureaucrats. But warriors, <laughs> you're the only one I've encountered. These people are offering us ships and weapons. In vast quantities, enough to completely change the balance of power. In return, they ask for nothing at all. Nothing? Nothing, except to conceal that these are new ships and new weapons. I don't think Koza are too keen to show their hand preferring to remain in the darkness. Is this group... human? I'm afraid to say they are. Very much so. I don't get it. Why do you oppose this? It sounds bad for us and good for you. Because these people don't want to see my side victorious. Nor do they want to see the Commonwealth win a military victory. No. What they want to see is a stalemate. An impasse. And with it, a continuation of hostilities. I'm sure that if we were winning this war, then it would be you receiving the military assistance. Who... or what... is Koza? I don't know, but I have my theories. Which are? We see a group with access to high-technology weapons and ships. They have a massive budget and manufacturing capability. A group which, as far as we can tell, is endeavouring to influence the conflict. 
My guess is that COSA is some kind of conspiracy of arms manufacturers and shipbuilders. They are the ones who stand to benefit from this war, and they have all the right equipment to push the war their way. Okay, assuming you're right, what do we do? Well, I can do most good staying inside the independence movement and trying to get the council to accept my point of view. You, on the other hand, can take a more active position. Meaning? There's a scheduled meeting between our top brass and a COSA ship to organize a massive transfer of weapons. It's occurring now, as we speak. I'll transmit the location. If you were to simply turn up, I think it would do enough. Each side would get the jitters. But I advise that you hurry. Now, if you would kindly release my ship, I'll recover from unconsciousness and send out a distress message. Very well. Approaching Macduff's coordinates now. I see Indy ships and another of the black vessels. So black ships equals Koza, huh? Uh oh, I think we've been spotted. Ships are separating. Looks like the Indy is heading for the L4 and the uh, black ship is going for the L5 point. By breaking ranks with his people, Macduff had taken an enormous risk. He had revealed that the Indies were receiving military aid on a massive scale from some sort of conspiracy. Exactly what that conspiracy was, we were just about to discover. We're in the Sirius B system. I've figured out why the system was not on the list. 
Sagittarius B has no natural Lagrange points. Wait a minute, what did we just arrive at? It certainly looked like a Lagrange point. I said natural. What we just jumped through was an artificial Lagrange point. Look around. There is only one planet in sight. The secondary mass is the station itself. Gravimetrics say that the station weighs over three trillion tons. That station must be chock full of neutronium. I guess we should take a closer look. Hey, this is a very active system. Ships and scans everywhere, none of it friendly. My guess is that it isn't going to take them too long to figure out that they were expecting one ship and got two. Uh, the jump back wash might give us a few seconds of cover and then, uh, hey, we're wide open and then there's nothing we can hide behind. Hey, I'm picking up multiple ships, one absolutely massive source. We are in deep trouble. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, something is coming through the point, something big. is going to start cooling off. If we don't power down soon, they'll detect us. My guess is they'll spot the heat signature of any warship in seconds. Smaller ships they're probably less worried about. If we use modest amounts of thrust, we can keep the heat of the command section down. They'll probably ignore us.
We're close enough to that station to make some scans now, Captain. You just need... Okay, sir. We are getting imaging now. Transferring image from external scanners. This is scary stuff. My advice is to get out of the system now. Let's consider this mission complete. McDuff had warned us that a shadowy group was assisting the Indies, but when we uncovered the Koza base, we were unprepared for just how powerful they were. Their base was vast, and they had hundreds of unmarked ships. This group seemed to pose a major threat to the Commonwealth. Goodenough agreed and decided that we should attack immediately.
This briefing is addressed to all current captains. In the last few hours, the Dreadnought has returned to this station with some startling information. Her crew came across something new, and on receiving this information, we have decided to act immediately. The Dreadnought jumped into the Sirius B system and recorded these pictures of a gigantic base. This is not an Indy or a Commonwealth base, neither is it alien. If we are right, these are the headquarters of the mysterious black ships we have been seeing for some time. We believe this station to represent a new faction, a group of humans with access to advanced military technology. Our analysts say that this group is a conspiracy of weapons manufacturers and others with a commercial interest in the war. It is this group which has been assisting the Indies with the aim of perpetuating the war indefinitely. Up to this point in time, there was never any traffic to and from Sirius B, because our generation probes showed there was no stable Lagrange point there to jump to. Which brings me to a tactical analysis of this station. We intend to make an assault on this station immediately. Despite being in a secret location, the station is massively armed and encrusted with gun emplacements making a conventional assault impossible. In this section of the station is this structure, which we believe houses a sizable neutron star fragment. Certainly enough neutronium to last the Commonwealth for years, and massive enough to make a stable artificial Lagrange point, granting access to and from the Sirius B system. With this sort of power, a direct assault against the station would be futile. But we have devised a different attack strategy. Near the station is an area where cargo transporters are held. Hopefully the black ships will be too busy protecting the station to worry about the freight ships. Using remote activation, the Dreadnought's crew will take control of one of the large transporters. If the Dreadnought's crew are successful, they will send the transport into a collision with the base. We hope this will be enough to take out the guns at one side of the station. But this will be all we need to bring in our ships and confront the black ships on a more even basis. If we can keep our ships away from the station's cannon, we should be able to press an advantage over the black ships. If the fleet is successful, we can play our ace in the hole. The cruiser's sword of vengeance has been modified to clean up the station. Hostile base dead ahead. Approaching cargo transporter. Sir, we are unable to make a remote link with the cargo transporter. That base is kicking out too much EF static to form a stable link.
After the battle had died down, the smoke started to clear. It soon became obvious that the Koza conspiracy had been manipulating the war all along, keeping it going. The conspiracy had involved arms manufacturers, shipbuilders, almost everybody who stood to make a profit from the war. So as we were out there killing one another, they were just sitting there getting richer and richer. With the conspiracy revealed, the way was open for peace talks, but we didn't count on what happened next. Captain, we have received another message from our mutual friend, Mr. Macduff. It's bad news, I'm afraid. Despite the attack on the black ship base, he assures us that a massive consignment of arms and new vessels is on its way into Indy hands as we speak. I am giving you command of a squadron of PATCOM interceptors. Our source was typically vague. We don't know how the delivery is taking place, but we do have a location, Omicron Eridani, and a time. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is that we intercept this cargo. Your mission is to prevent this transfer and block these ships and weapons falling into enemy hands, using all means at your disposal. Leading an Indy Force at target point. There's only small ships. The mega transporter must have moved on. That's interesting. They're forming two units. One to engage us, and the other is heading for the jump point. You think they're trying to stall us? Message from HQ, Captain. Intelligence says they've jumped to the Tarsetti system. Has. Lay it in as our jump destination. 
The cargo pods have broken free from the wreckage. I'm getting an unexpected energy reading from them. That'll be the ships they were transporting. I had no idea they were manned. Go for the pods. It's not sportsmanlike, but it's easier to shoot those ships while they're still in bed. We need to speed things up, sir. One of the pods just opened. Two pack comms on attack vector.
If that shipment had made it to the Indies, it would have radically changed the balance of power. With it gone, the Indies were keen to enter talks. Alert. Emergency. All hands to battle stations. All hands to battle stations. This is not a drill. All Commonwealth shipping, this is Admiral Brett, temporarily in charge of this facility. This is an emergency situation. All ships should comply with emergency provision plans for Beta. Those plans should be automatically unlocked by this transmission. Over and out. Arriving at the Gunstar Rain now. Surely we've been sent the wrong way. The battle is in the opposite direction. Orders are orders. There's a ship coming through. It's covered with shield generators. Calling all Commonwealth Navy vessels. This is the Indy Scout ship. Respect your elders. A small squadron of Indy ships will soon arrive at your Lagrange Point. This squadron will not encounter any resistance. They will not because they are carrying a device. The device is a Class II annihilation bomb. The bomb is more than capable of vaporizing everything in a sphere of space 100 kilometers from the detonation point. Firing on a device will trigger it. The device will be carried to your station and detonated, allowing the transport ships and all Navy vessels to withdraw to a safe distance. If you follow these instructions, there will be no loss of life. Your Gunstar defense platform should be shut down immediately. This is Navy HQ to Dreadnought. We think they are serious. We're shutting down the Gunstars and preparing for evac. You are ordered to do what you can. NHQ out. It's coming through. Yep, uh-huh. Hmm, that's a bomb, all right. Big one, too. You know, we could try picking off the tug ships. I think you're right. It might buy us some time. There are all the tugs that detach from the bomb. They probably think we're crazy. The bomb is still headed for the station under its own inertia. The man said it had a 100-kilometer blast radius. So with my lightning-quick mental arithmetic, I'd say what we need is to get the bomb at least 100 kilometers from the station. Okay, let's go for it. You can try docking the safe distance, safe being more than 100 kilometers. We can tow it, but not easily. It's too massive for the Dreadnought to carry alone.
We are now 100 kilometers clear of the station. Ten seconds. You did it. Yes, the HQ is still in one piece. They're calling us to stand down and return to base. We had saved the HQ and our fleet managed to take on the Indies and come out of it pretty well. Their failure to succeed must have caused some changes in the Indie hierarchy because it wasn't long before peace talks were on the agenda. This is an historic time. For the first time in over a decade, all hostilities between ourselves and the independents have ceased. With the ceasefire in place, a secret peace conference is currently being held. Many senior members of the Commonwealth government are meeting with Indy leaders right now. On a personal note, I am eager to see the conference succeed, but I am concerned there are forces on both sides with too much invested in this war to see it end now. We also suspect there are other forces acting who would delight in seeing this conference fail. To provide security for the conference, a neutral force has been established, SECPAT. It will be made up from both former Indy and Navy crews. Your mission will be to take part in the security patrol, protecting the conference venue and keeping the peace. Your wingman will almost certainly be your former enemy. You are to act with due respect and all courtesy to all shipping bearing a conference security beacon. But at the same time, watch your six. Sir, in accordance with our orders, I have altered our ID marker to show that this ship is a member of the security patrol. All security patrol vessels will appear as white contacts. Camp Schumacher Space Traffic Control. Hailing vessel marked CNV-301. Spatial identity and mission. This is a high security area not open to general or military traffic. This is uh, the Dreadnought reporting in for security patrol duty. Dreadnought, welcome to the Peace Conference. And welcome to SECPAT. I am SECPAT's only admiral. I hope your former commanding officer made it clear that for now on, the security patrol is an autonomous military force, and completely unconnected to the Commonwealth or Indy navies. Yes sir, she did. Good. Depending on how this conference goes, SECPAT might be disbanded in the next 10 minutes, or might last another 10 years. Either way, until further notice, you take your orders from me. And you follow my rules. 
Now I am transmitting your new orders. Over and out. You will shortly be joined by a wingman. Don't be too surprised if his paint scheme is a little wild. You should be patrolling the conference base area and check out anything out of the ordinary. There are two areas I'm particularly concerned about. The first is the docking area on the underside of the station. The second is the Lagrange point. We want to make sure we check out every ship coming into the system. This is Yarwood terminating this briefing document. Waypoint 1 laid in for the conference area. This is the North Miranda. We've been given orders to act as your wingman. Welcome to Sexpack. Roger that, no surrender. This is, uh, com... Uh, uh, security Patrol Vessel Dreadnought. Good to meet you. This is Yarwood. I am monitoring the activity of the conference. Things are going pretty well. The Commonwealth has conceded the rights for miners to set their own pricing levels. This is it. Scalabot to the vessel's approaching. You are ordered to cease your approach and maintain a five kilometer distance. That's odd. She's hotter than I'd expect. She's running at about 40%. Is that unusual? If she was moving, no. But she's standing still, I don't know. They might be doing an engine run. Okay, I've laid in the third and final waypoint just next to the Lagrange point. That would be us, Security Patrol Vessel Dreadnought. What's your business in this system? We are official observers for the Indy Council. While we hope everything can be worked out peacefully, we're here in case it can't. That sounds like a threat. Oh, far from it. We will abide by the agreements made here. We're just concerned by the possibility that this might be a trap. They're on the list, sir. We can let them in. Okay. Dread not to lesser evil. Be on your way. Thank you. This is Yarwood. King has just stormed out of the conference. Everyone out there? 
Just stay calm. We better return to the conference center. There might be trouble. asked us to change colors and join his force. Two other ships have already abandoned their security patrol beacons. Just give me the word and I ditch ours. We will do no such thing. We take our orders from a higher authority. I thought that was clear.
The peace talks ended in failure, but we couldn't let the chance pass. Yarwood's security force became the core of a new alliance. Many ships joined from both sides, all dedicated to finding a new order, a new justice. I was among them, as was Goodenough. Meanwhile, King took off with the hardliners and the old guard. He was regrouping, but for what, we couldn't tell. We are currently within what was the Indy Main Headquarters, a hollow asteroid in the Epsilon Iridani system, which has been converted into a vast space dock. Since the formation of our alliance, based on the security patrol, President King has been attacking former Indy strongholds at random, and we now believe he has the location of this base. We are sure that he will attack, and it is vital that we protect this base and its ships. The central asteroid is protected by five century asteroids. Each of these centuries is fitted with a high power spider gun. Any ship flying near the base will be quickly taken out by the cannon. But there is a weakness in the defense. The guns are remotely controlled by a tight beam data network. The network uses these control nodes to relay information to the guns. If an attacking force could take out the control nodes, the guns would go offline and allow a conventional assault on the base. It is therefore imperative to try and keep the network up and running. We have a limited number of replacement nodes we can launch. Your mission is to lead the defense of the station. You should draw on wingmen to assist you against King's fleet. This is Yarwood to all ships. Our long-range sensors are picking up the attack fleet. We are seeing at least one cruiser and two destroyers. They are keeping their distance. A smaller squadron is moving in. I guess they're going for the network. I see them. They're headed for the nodes, all right. Oh, and I'm seeing some troop carrier ships. Ready, right. When the guns go offline, the troop ships will set down on the sentry asteroids and decommission the guns. They've taken out a node, and another. That's it, the network is down. Guns are offline. Those troop ships are moving in.
guns. Can't you get that network up? Hey, 
felt strange defending the Indy base, but I believe it was the right thing to do. We had managed to protect the base, but King's ship had escaped. I think I could see where this was leading. The former President King and a group of hardliners are attempting to form a new power block. They call themselves New Commonwealth, but have so far found little support. Without planetary support, King's people are moving as a fleet following his ship Excalibur, and attempting to curry favor with loyal colonies, while at the same time terrorizing the colonies which were formerly Indie strongholds. We received these pictures. They show the remains of a hospital ship, the Hippocrates, which was carrying wounded people when it was attacked by one of King's ships. As an alliance, we like to be tolerant. But King's reign of terror has to come to an end. I am therefore sending you on a mission to take King down. I'm looking for the renegade ships now. No sign of them, but we are getting an automated mayday signal from the outpost. Sir, uh, the outpost has taken quite a beating. Most of the crew quarters are breached. Uh, this is the uh, new Alliance vessel Dreadnought. What is your status? We are able to offer assistance. Bogies, including one cruiser, the Excalibur. Looks like we found King and his whole fleet. I don't think he'll be too pleased to see us. We are in deep, deep trouble. Okay. I have our location. Attempting FTL transmission now. I cannot transmit an FTL. We're being jammed. This is the Commonwealth Patrol Combatant, Gibraltar. Dreadnought, hold your position. 
We will not open fire. Hey, I get it. They think we've come to join up. This could work in our favor. State your identification and your purpose for coming here. This is the Dreadnought. We're here to offer our services to your movement and to request membership. We place this vessel at your disposal. I'll handle this. This is King. I am pleased to welcome you, Dreadnought. Please, hold position and transmit your ship's control authority to the Excalibur. Um, our nav subsystem was damaged in a firefight. We'll pull the processor and shut the ship down. Stand by. Has set the jump destination back to our ship. This is the Dreadnought. We have the location of the Renegade fleet. The fleet is right on top of the jump point, so be ready to come out fighting. Follow us in, and good luck. Sir, the Excalibur is moving. King is heading for the jump point. Okay, we'll activate the device and follow her through. We've made quite a jump. The Excalibur looks like she's damaged. 
Sorry, sorry, that last jump was a large one. We're now very, very low on fuel. We don't have enough to make another jump. The Excalibur is still blocking FTL, so we can't call for backup. Hold on, the cruiser is launching fighters. We've lost weapons control. We're in trouble. Listen, there are times when things have to end. This guy has to go down and there's only you here. Sacrifices sometimes have to be made. I think you're right. But we don't have to sacrifice everything.
Okay. If you come back from a mission after fulfilling your mission objectives, you're a hero. Let's face it, if you come back from a mission at all, you're doing well. But if you get back to base minus a ship, the chances are you're not going to keep your job. So when we finally made it back to Navy HQ, none of us expected much. Certainly nothing like the kind of reception we saw. With King gone and the war ended, it was like everything changed. We didn't know it then, but people were celebrating on every system in known space. I was such a hero. They even offered me a desk job. But I wasn't ready to calm down. Not then. I think I made the right choice.